backed up. Um, so welcome to our presentation, Boosting Performance for 2015 and for the rest of 2014 for that matter. And the irony is this is one of our favorite little setups. In fact, um, it, it, one of the um, our attendees tonight just asked how I was doing after uh, my uh, the car accident in February. It's been a really uh, a long year and if I'm not mistaken this is a photo from that presentation in New York. Uh, hard to tell I had the, right there a little bit of a problem with that left shoulder and uh, lower back and neck and of course the knee way down there but in any event one of my favorite patterns folks that uh, what we like to look at is uh, a momentum indicator thrust uh, we like to look at PPS buy signals and of course uh, we also look at these little consolidation breakouts and ways to trade those which we'll discuss in just a few minutes. Um, that's the irony of having this photo there. It's kind of a, a subliminal uh, message of trades that we look at for uh, trend consolidation and then resumption of trades uh, of trend and ways to look at those uh, breakout those momentum breakouts in fact uh, many of you may recall my second book which is now I can't believe it my second book was written over a decade ago ten years ago candlestick and pivot point trading triggers was uh, published a decade ago where we talked about last additional change we talked about uh, it was this new kind of new but we we really embellished on on, on um, exchange traded funds and uh, we had a great example there on the FXE, the Euro Currency Exchange Traded Fund, and how to trade that by looking at the futures rather than the spot Forex markets. And that same kind of analogy can be used even to this day in um, trading the markets uh, and, and how we look at the markets in, in stock indice trading, especially when we have rollover, which we just did. Um, especially when there's a time where you, where you switch over from one contract month to the next. So for example, when we had rollover, for we, we stop trading the December futures and then you start trading the March futures. Um, there is a special way that you can, you can trade the rollover. Everyone thinks that you have to immediately start trading the March. The danger is that you just want to make sure that your trading platform is set for the new contract and your charts are set for the, the same month. Just make sure. But you can still trade the, um, the, the, the front month for a, few, a couple days. So if you have rollover on the open outcry of Thursday, you can really st even trade that uh, December contract even into Monday. But any event, um, so that's a, a little lesson for you going forward. But what happens, and the reason I bring this up is a lot of people say, hey, as you start to lose volume and as you start to lose that um, market participation, some people still trading December, some people trading March, you can, might get a little chart pattern difference because you lose that that act, action volume activity kind of concept and that's why it pays to flip and 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 maybe look at the underlying ETF so instead of looking at just the futures also look at the if you're trading S&Ps instead of looking at the ES um, the E mini futures uh, for the December contract or the ES for the March contract you might have a, a different chart pattern flip it over and watch the spiders the SPY Anyway, one little technique, and that wasn't on today's agenda, but um, I, I think it is important because I went on this little tangent about the book that, are, that was a, a, uh, now in its, entering its 10-year anniversary. Um, and what really helped a lot of traders combine candlesticks with pivot point analysis and, and of course, our momentum indicator dubbed the PPS, the person's pivot study. And I know we've developed a, quite a following through the decade, and I can't believe it's been a decade already. So with that said, I do want to get uh, jumping into what we've got going on for you tonight and what to, to look forward to. Um, take one moment to read this uh, important disclosure. Trading is risky. Most of you are aware of that, and uh, we'll move forward. So we've got now. It's the clock ticking. I've done a few presentations, and some of you may have been here last month, and uh, or saw me at the Traders Expo, where we had 28 days to trading, and we gave a lot of great trading suggestions. Uh, the January effect, uh, for for example, um, we have the Santa Claus rally that's happened today, yesterday, and 
we're going to see if there's much left to that uh, rally. If there's uh, where we should be in the market, and in, in in as far as sectors, as far as uh, which stock indices to, to look at. Um, and I always tell people in order to figure out where a market price might go, you first need to kind of see where it's been, what's the condition it's been. And um, of course, past price action, when I say past price action, um, such as looking at the condition, the velocity, large range, narrow range bars, gaps, old swing highs and lows, those types of points of interest or price points of interest are also important to, to look at to see if we're coming up near an old high. Are we getting ready to break out? That, th that type of analysis really helps. I think a lot of traders under-emphasize or underuse longer-term charts in their analysis, and most people stick to day charts, which sometimes only go, they take a look back on their screen only 90 days, uh, which is really amazing to me. I saw I, I, I saw the experience that, and I share that with you tonight because it's exactly what people were telling me at the Traders Expo in November. So um, when I hear a few people telling me that, it tells me that they're learning it from somewhere and that there must be other people that are doing the same thing. And so if if a lot of people are kind of using the same style of analysis and they're struggling in their trading, then you know it, it, it it's something that you want to learn not to do, so to speak, right? You know I'm very big on seasonal analysis and been that way for a number of decades and why I was a uh, contributing editor with the uh, Commodity Traders Almanac, but seasonal analysis definitely helps to give us an idea of past supply and demand influences, and and of course my my the most important um, secondary aspect of looking at seasonal analysis is to see what the duration of a, a typical seasonal trend is. So if we come in through a a time frame where, like for example, crude oil typically goes down from September to about middle of December, which is now. Um, it bounces a little bit in the new year, chops around in January, and by the first week of February, that is the best time of the year to go long um, the fossil fuel crude oil complex, right? Now, in energy, and we've had just this amazing decline in the market in the last week and a half, We've been uh, not just tweeting, but talking to our uh, the morning briefing that we did for Trade Station a week ago, and talked about the there's three different areas of energy in stock sectors that we can play. Of course, you know that you can trade the crude oil directly, and the ET, corresponding ETF is USO. Next, we can play the overall energy ETF which is more diversified in nature, which is the XLE. Next is the XES, and then finally the XOP, oil and gas exploration. So there are several different sectors to look at rather than just looking at one market. And when we're taking a look at the um, a specific commodity or an area, because of the creation of ETFs, um, and the popularity of ETFs and the increasing uh, amount of ETFs that are created. I mean, you, you don't even have to trade live cattle anymore. You can trade an ETF um, aptly titled COW, C-O-W, which uh, accounts for the pricing structure of the first three contract months, I believe three, maybe it's four, of the live cattle futures markets and beef prices. So there's all kinds of things that we can do. Um, I think Santa Claus over here has definitely got his eyes full of smiles. You can actually see that Santa Claus is smiling because he's, he's very happy with what we're doing over here at Person's Planet, that's for sure, because this is my 12-step program, which I call to uh, at least help me to determine trades and, more importantly, directional option trades. I'm gonna, I've been on a tangent about directional option trading t tactics for quite some time. Back in 1986, um, it was the directional option strategies that I used in the Treasury bonds when they, f they first introduced options on, on bond futures. That's how long I've been trading options, uh, by the way. And uh, many of you already know this because I see a lot of repeat offenders and repeat friends here, such as, well, we've got Bruce Sheffield, and I know Sharon R. I don't want to give your name out, um, but I Sharon, it's good to see you here tonight. 
Um, and so I'm not going to Vince, uh, Vince C. And I mean, I, I just go through the list here, and it's nice to see all you guys come back and 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 have an interest in wanting to see what I have to say, or maybe gain some insightful information. So it's it's nice to see you guys here. Um, the the techniques that I've used over the last decade, um, and the techniques that I when I say the last decade. Um, the, the the information in, that I've published in my second book, which is over a decade, is still the same things that I've used in over my 35-year career. Um, you know, we, we've just had better, we have, I think, a change of scenery and landscape in, in how we're able to trade via electronic trading. I think right now we have probably one of the best environments for trading because we could take advantage of so many different markets um, and, and, and ways to trade those markets. I can day trade. I can still spread trade. I can do options strategies and I think a lot of people have gone through a higher degree of education and of options and, and, and I'm sharing this with you tonight because I've polled a lot of people and I do like to poll not for my own interest but to take that information and share it with others so that they know that they're not alone and, and I think that's what's really important is to find out what's happening in the world what's what's been going on and a lot of people have been taking a lot of option classes and you're all taught that you know I don't want to get into the specifics but many of you know that you oh, there's been more promotion of doing spreads for example vertical call spreads and less directional um, trades and I think that the reason why people teach less directional strategies is because they don't have the analytical skills and I think if you can learn better analytical skills, I've always said this, and you've heard me, I don't know how many years I've been saying this, if you had better analytical skills, you would probably be doing less adjustment to your option positions. And these are the 12 techniques uh, that I use day in and day out. Many of you know I use my PPS, that's the person's pivot study, the momentum indicator it gives. It's either the dots or the arrows that give you buy and sell triggers. Um, we also have the moving average overlays to help us look at regression to the mean or pullbacks for order entry. The reason I use these, it's a, obviously it's a, a dynamic indicator for pricing, uh, a price indicator that is, and it's easy to scan whether you use Thinkorswim, whether you use TradeStation, whether you use Genesis, Trade Navigator, I can scan for momentum changes buy or sell signals I can do it on multiple time frames daily weekly 16 60 minutes 15 minutes and I can scan for those definitive buy and sell signals um, many of you if you're not familiar with those buy and sell signals it's real simple we have um, just looking at for example on TradeStation this is kind of unique, just the kind of cutting edge things that we do. Not many, if you have TradeStation, you've probably never seen a momentum indicator with arrows. We now have, we created here at Persons Planet, my indicators with arrows. One of the first people uh, to actually come out with finally arrows on TradeStation. So we, we continue to do cutting edge analysis and, of course, things to uh, really. Uh, you know move with the time but the PPS indicator and using a 60 minute chart um, you can see the blue for for buy and red for sell so um, that's kind of the you know whether it, whatever platform you're using it's the it's it's a very similar um, indicator and that's what PPS is if you're not familiar with that it stands for person's pivot study we also use the person's pivot um, indicator which gives us what the market condition is and under that condition it lays out what our um, support and resistance targets are and that's great for setting profit objectives it doesn't mean that every time you're going to not see the market turn on a dime near a resistance for example but it gives you an idea of taking a profit and I think one of the things that everyone kinda gets hung up about is uh, they get out too early so they stick around and you know they they wear out their welcome in a trend so to speak and I think one of the the neat things is is that we are able to find trade if you're if you 
are open-minded and open to um, trading other products, then you will find yourself in a wealth of, of trading opportunities out there. Um, while markets are hot and heavy and, and, and getting too risky, so to speak, by average true range by expansion of ranges you know you start looking for other trading opportunities whether it's in cattle whether it's in bonds whether it's in a, a stock for example an individual stock or an ETF or a sector there's all kinds of things there for us to trade or in fact there's different ways to trade them via an ETF or like I just men mentioned like a spread uh, we just did a knob spread the other day posted that on Twitter and uh, you know sent that out to the world before it even came in and today it, it came in almost a full point for us uh, that's uh, a really nice a nice trade that occurred so um, there are different ways that we can and different markets to trade and these are the indicators that I use to come up with a lot of the trade and all of the trade decisions that we make um, so person's pivots we use of course chart patterns such as it's even you know on the front page photo that was what that that little um, uh, diagram was showing the wedge breakout uh, using the PPS indicator channels seasonal and cycle analysis volume analysis and my volume and the indicators rather than looking at volume histogram bars so I think two things I would walk away with is that understanding that a lot of people have struggled with volume histogram in the last few years and a lot of people are getting frustrated with getting into quote-unquote option strategies while markets are seeing big moves in underlying swings 5, 8, 10, 15, 20 percent moves but yet they're locked in in in, in vertical call spreads for example and, and I don't know if this relates to you but I just wanted to pass it on that a lot of people have expressed to me that they're 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 fed up they're they're frustrated with that and they're looking for something a little bit better and, and you know what you 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 deserve it you're right and it it actually is there for you so uh, there's nothing wrong with and I want everyone to understand this there's no if you've never heard this before or if you've heard it before and you've forgotten it let me explain to you again there is no other investment vehicle that can define limited risk by offering you incredible leverage with defined risk than an outright out of the money option whether it be a long call or a long put the problem is that as it is true 80 to 90 percent of the time they expire worthless but I think if you have better analytical skills you can improve your timing and with seasonal analysis you can uh, for the most part improve the 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 uh, duration so your expiration date of selecting not only the right strike but the the right amount of time to be in the trade and that's one of the things that we really try to emphasize and stress here um, I have this little histogram that is exclusive to TradeStation. I use this momentum. It's kind of a momentum indicator as well. Um, and you know that we're very big on relative strength analysis, which many of you may uh, uh, um, have confused with the relative strength index or I indicator, but we use it as like uh, what's more aptly known as like a pairs or a spread trade comparing one product to another kind of like you know looking at how one sector is performing versus another or how one stock is performing to its underlying sector or how bonds are performing relative to 10-year notes that's a spread or relative strength or corn wheat or for example the S&P's versus the Russell small cap versus blue chip and of course the commitment at traders data breadth analysis we've done this and and you've been around long enough if you've seen me before to give you a, a look-see into and I just kinda had that up just a second ago is looking at the various indexes that we have like the spiders the Q's the diamonds again that would be the S&P 500 the Nasdaq 100 the Dow Jones Industrial Average the Russell as measured on this chart using the IWM this is the Nasdaq composite index and then the New York Stock Exchange composite index when we talk about breadth most people have the access to use 
the uh, advanced decline comparative ratio line, but it's given in terms uh, on the NYSE data, as well as the McClellan oscillator is another uh, more f uh, popular breadth indicator out there. What we've done and taught and show people is if we're trading different segments of the market, why not take a look at the breadth analysis on each respective individual stock index? And that's one of the things that I think besides person's pivots, besides looking at um, my PPS indicators, the fact that we've been telling this for a number of years and sharing with people that this is very important in, in determining the strength or the health of a trend of a stock index. After all, there's got to be about 150 different indicators out there, but they're all measuring or used uh, as component of pricing. I mean, think about it. MACD is moving averages on price. Uh, Bollinger Bands, uh, uh, CCI, a ADX, I, I mean, Stochastics, and, and just Williams Percent R, RSI. The list just goes on and on and on. They're all indicators built and based on price. But you also have participation, like such as what the advancing issues compared to the declining issues are. Today, for example, looking at the S&P 500, at the end of the day, 477 stocks in the S&P 500 advanced, 23 stocks declined in the S&P 500. We take a look, as you can see here, the advanced decline ratio line. It compares advancing stocks versus declining stocks and gives us a comparative ratio line. Then uh, on the bottom here I look at is it says here JP the on balance volume indicator with a little moving average to help me to determine the health of the market. So I got breadth analysis, price analysis, and volume participation analysis. I have three different non-correlated ways to take a look at the stock index and I do that and have an individual look-see on the advanced decline and on each respective index. In fact, that absolutely has been very instrumental um, in this year in helping to determine the strength or weaknesses, both actually, in um, various segments of the market. Back in, uh, 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 in late August, early September, some of you may have been around when I was promoting, heavily promoting, to be short the market. And I know every analyst out there, everyone was calling a top of the market, but not many people actually called the bottom and actually flipped and reversed and stated to go long and buy call options in IWM. We actually had a nice high close doji in the IWM, a PPS buy signal on a huge reversal in volume along accompanied with a huge surge in advanced decline reading as it related to the Russell. In fact, that low, that October 15th low up until the 1st of November, actually the Russell did outperform. So dollar to dollar. You got more bang for your buck investment dollar. Rate of return was greater on the Russell than it was on the either the NASDAQ or even the S&Ps. And that was the anal analytical tools used to help determine that, that call in the market. So we definitely use the breadth analysis. So when I, when I share with you that I'm saying, hey, we, we use breadth analysis for stock indices, I just wanted to give you a, 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 and show you more definitively what I mean by that. Of course, my last conditional change pattern identification is just absolutely key for both trailing stops as well as looking for entries for breakouts. Really uh, important. And last but not least, money management and position sizing guidelines is, is just absolutely critical in, in making sure that you're in the right amount of positions, whether it be options or actual underlying futures or stocks. So here's what we need. And you know, 
just to re-emphasize, everyone I think can use better market analytical skills and knowledge of triggers and order entries. When do you use a limit order, especially on a pullback? Where do you place those limit orders? Um, you know, do you put them against a moving average or a last known level of a moving average or slightly higher? Of course, stop orders for using on breakouts. Under what condition do you put that stop order to let the market take you into the trade? Because when a market breaks out, if you don't have an order to let the market take you in, by the time the market takes off, you can't get in the darn thing. So you need to, in, in that case, you really need to anticipate and have good anticipation skills, right? I mean, I'm not the first guy in the world to teach how to trade people to tra take a breakout, right? I mean, we've been doing breakout trades and using stop record orders. That's why they have it on most platforms. You guys remember uh, Strategy Runner. You know, if you guys have been around a long time, remember Anna? Um, the, the irony is I think uh, actually the only asset that MF Global actually bought before they went under um, was John Corzine decided to buy because they figured out the only thing MF Global had were clients and retail clients at that. Um, and they didn't have an analytical, they didn't have an order entry platform, they didn't have a, their own um, technical software. So what they did is they wrote a check to, to and bought Strategy Runner. In case you ever wondered whatever happened to that company, that was my uh, just a little bit of history there for you, for you futures traders. Um, kind of ironic if you think about it. Anyway, I think risk management, proper position sizing, I can't reemphasize that enough. And of course, understanding market trend stages to determine your option strategies and more importantly, directional strategies. We went through this about last month and I wanted to, to go over a couple of these slides because they're extremely important, especially in, in the in sense that we've had a lot of trending markets, in, including crude oil. And, and, and I want to go over that with you guys tonight because this is part of learning what's happened so that we can start to study and, and take these opportunities. Because remember, when a market's been in a big move, it's going to either resume, pause, or reverse the trend. And we've got a lot of that going on between crude oil and gold and, and biotech sector, the IBB. There's an in, uh, just an enormous pool of opportunities and there's an enormous amount of seasonal trades setting up right now. Believe it or not, I don't know if you noticed that slide. I'll go back here and share this. There's seven and a half trading days left until 2015 begins. What does that really mean? Well, it means that there's going to be some changes coming up into the marketplace, and we need to anticipate those market opportunities. With seven and a half days left, trading days, you've got to realize that we are seeing and will probably continue to see going into the middle of January the small cap sector um, outperforming as we know it the January effect that that lasts going into the first two weeks of January so that January effect that's on and has been on for the last couple days um, and we also have these year-end rallies it generally makes the January break a little more lucrative for us so if we get a strong year-end rally you start to see stocks that are strong and the year strong they're more susceptible for profit taking after the midpoint or that January break and you're also due for and I'm sure not many people are talking about it already but we've got earnings season ahead of us in just a few weeks so we've got earnings coming up we've got the um, 2015 deadline which means whatever you made this year you're gonna have to write a check to Uncle Sam I gave a big thing today or a little thing today actually a little speech in the in our trading room this morning and I said we had a really great run in the market recently in our trading community and I said guys get on the phone and get a check take 30 percent of your profits get a check that way when you get that check or if you live in New Zealand ask for a wire when you get that money you'll know what you're here for you're here to see that money in your hand plus the reason you're only asking for 30 percent is because you still gotta pay taxes on these profits so remember you don't want to take a whole lot of profits as far but you need to take some profits especially fund managers 
who are trading OPM. If you're trading other people's money, then you are apt to take profits on those positions because you're getting paid on a quarterly basis. So there are some end of quarter, end of year, there's pension fund, there's a lot of sea of changes, a lot of tides going on in the market right now. And it's just a matter of you know, you're kind of like drooling at the mouth. Which you're at a buffet. Which one do you go for first? Do you go for the carved uh, uh, prime rib, or do you hit the dessert first? Right. So it's really a, a tough decision what we want to do. Um, also, certain foreign markets. I know for a fact we covered this one today. Not many people are talking about, and if they are the foreign markets, and if they are, they're talking about Russia and they're talking about Cuba. But they're probably not talking about the emerging markets, and they're certainly not talking about Latin America. But I think there are some intermediate-term buying opportunities via some ETFs traded right here on our U.S. markets that we can take a look at, which I'll share with you tonight. So, we have seasonal lows. Everyone's talking about materials and how, how bad things are around the world. Anyone take a look at copper or lumber prices lately? Um, you know, copper hasn't exploded off the charts yet, but it's not precipitously crashing either that one would anticipate. You know, with, with the fact that, you know, crude oil and slowdown in China and all the headline news, it's kind of like it's, it's not spelling out the or painting the picture of a dire uh, economic crunch. We are seeing potential uh, bottoming action occur because from a seasonal perspective, copper prices actually bottom out in December. Um, and then last but not least, we have this quick little thing we call the dogs of the year. Typically, negative performers, stocks that are negative on the year that haven't moved up as we are in the middle of December, which is now. So stocks that are negative on the year right now, they tend to rebound sharply after the new year into April. So there wasn't enough space on this yellow line to say April, but you buy some names at, after the first of the year and you look to see the price improve into April. So this could be great for out of the money call option long shots we like to call them or s and g trades smiles and giggles um, many of you may know it referred to s and g as something else but we'll just say it as smiles and giggles right now but the tax credit selling pressure is abated and then you see some moves that it come up by the way one in particular and and looking at this cross here right here this is the white line marks the um like the the line in the sand where did the stock end last year that's what the the the, the vertical uh line and the horizontal line that's what all of this is is showing you that's all this means this little white line there and that white line there it just shows all year this stock has gone from a little um positive to negative on the year to positive to just unchanged to positive and it's negative into the middle of december so as this stock, if it remains, even with today's price action, this is what's really cool. With today's positive stock uh, index action, this company is called Yelp, Y-E-L-P, and it is on our watch list. I want it to be on your watch list too. So as of the beginning of the year, um, we would be looking for this stock to make an, an advance that would last going into April. Now, Yelp is relatively new, but you know, last year it also it started to perform right after the beginning of the year. There's not a lot of seasonality to it, but there is one other technique that we're we're looking at. Number 1, my momentum indicator. You can clearly see that the market's made newer lows, but my momentum indicator is not making newer lows. In fact, it's forming a little bit of what we would consider bullish convergence over time. In addition, as you can clearly see, we're starting to form a more tightening, declining wedge formation. And you can also see that while the stock is at or near the exact lows that it was at in May of this um, year, right? This, this low right here, you'll note that the volume levels from this time 
look where the volume levels are now so we've been liquidating this stock on lighter volume which means that this thing is susceptible for a sharp short covering rally so the momentum is kind of building up for this particular name I don't know you know when people say I don't know what day or what hour or what week this thing's gonna go but it could go well I do have the inclination to know that no one in their right mind is is gonna start initializing a huge position and get capital out of any other position to put money to work in this one right ahead of the new year right um, they'll probably do it after the new year so this is one of those candidates that we look at as a stock going forward I just wanted to show that to you and what the other technical considerations are alright so that's that's a little Christmas stocking stuffer for you right there the next one is we did this presentation a few weeks or a month ago I think and I had the wrong charts up and it was just a real struggle to get the presentation out to you guys but you know I think if you judge me by my prowess of being able to teach you the right tools to use and my uncanny ability for uh, looking for sniffing out trading opportunities I think you'll learn a lot I got my stuff together a little bit better for this presentation as you can tell because I did a little bit more uh, lining of the stars up so to speak this is herbal life and you remember there's this I mean that the, the, the TV media just beat the dickens about this stock and the two big hedge fund guys that are in it and battling one's long one's short we don't need to get in that and I really don't care I look at this as a seasonal perspective and just to go back with you guys in time um, this particular stock um, in in the last four years really has gone up right after the uh, January or the de December decline it is rallied now some years it rallies a little bit more and one year last year in particular the trade did not work at all and I think there's a little bit difference in 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 analysis that could share with us why last year didn't work at all for one it had rallied into the beginning of the year and it had the opposite effect that a stock that rallies going into the end of the year no one wants to sell it because of the tax liability that you gotta pay in April so last year it didn't work because the market rallied ahead of the new years and that's why the stock most likely fell this year we have the opposite or the scenario that we're looking for market is been down all year and is ripe for an upside move one of the other considerations folks is that it also is kind of forming this little um, pattern here and 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 when I take a look at this a market that forms kind of like these uh, little tightening wedge formations and I also take a look at the same type of pattern exists here my momentum indicator is showing a little bit of bullish convergence and the volume on this sell-off has been extremely light so if a market was if it was just getting liquidated and selling off and I saw the volume and as you can see we've had times where the volume has sold off it's not doing that right now so there's another contender that we will be looking at so there's another little stocking stuffer this is a company that I hope they don't go out of business but you know as we start to see um, this year I think a lot of people are under um, the impression that you know as jobs have been created uh, more and more people you know Sears what is their their big business right they they really uh, do more in a, they still have a, a pretty strong uh, department of selling appliances right um, they have Sears they have credit that they offer um, but I think what's suffering in this sector in this segment of the market is we've seen less people buying homes and renting and as this whole year has gone by if you think about it someone that's rented an apartment that needs to save money next year could be the year of home ownership for a lot of people
So you want to remember that you've probably, remember you heard on the news, we even talked about it in our trading room, and we gave that out in, in uh, various online webinars with you guys. Remember I traveled out to Denver this year, and you know I was in Chicago, and I, I said, man, there's a lot of construction going on, but it's for apartment buildings. And I asked the audience, I said, how about in your area? And a lot of people you know, said, yeah, our, our, my neighborhood too. Yeah, yeah. There, so you've seen more apartment buildings going up, less uh, spec homes going up and so I, a lot of people are are now saving money so you're not just gonna run out and buy a home when you're in an apartment lease your lease runs out and then you're hopefully looking to get into a house so what am I what does that got to do with Sears a lot because as people get into maybe next year if you own or rent an apartment you're not doing a lot of leasehold improvements in, in a, an apartment are you you know you might you know decorate a few things go to bed bath and beyond buy new towels and sheets and things like that a TV here and there but you're not going going out and doing a lot of leasehold improvements. Um, so therefore, I think next year could be the year of that could see Sears to be a turnaround. It actually has been in a um, a, a little sideways channel, but this is a trade that is actually, I, I think every it warrants your attention because almost some years are better than others, but almost every year that the stock in the last four years that the stock has been down going into the beginning of the year, so if it's been down going into the end of the year, going down into the, the end or the beginning of the new year, right? we see uh, upside moves going into April. This year, no exception. We've declined going into the end of the year. Now, I would like to see this thing decline a little bit more. Right now, we're not really negative on the year, but we are declining. So if we can keep this market down over the next week or so and not really go anywhere that would be good news um, and I'd be looking at a a breakout trade because this is one candidate for that special kind of trend a little bit of consolidation and I would be looking for a special breakout play and if we do get a breakout play and we take out this overhead resistance it could be a very surprising move that that is certainly something that not a lot of people see coming so it it you know if if the news tells you they're going out of business and everyone's talking about it and Sears is da 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 da, da you know what the more people that hate the stock the more I kind of like it and I've got my I would keep my eyes peeled on that um, last but not least you got to hate this company, J.C. Penney's, but they're still in business, and I got news for you. The more people that hate it, the more I like this company. I'm going to tell you what. If they were going out of business, someone better explain to me why the volume is going up. This is more, to me, indicative of uh, uh, accumulation, not distribution. And we certainly have a bit of momentum uh, divergence and as the stock has been going down, the momentum indicator is reflecting something different, as is the volume as measured by OBV. So almost there's been uh, you know, a couple times where we've seen JCPenney as actually at the beginning of the year, uh, it's it's a beginning, one of those beginning of the years. Some years is better than others. This year, uh, in 2014, it actually, you got out with the skin of your teeth. You took some heat first, but it still went up. I think this could be the year of J.C. Penney's. From a technical perspective, you've already got this kind of like um, floor of support in, in via this double bottom. Um, and the volume analysis to me looks good and it's also one that is prone for that special little breakout it's got that special breakout um, pattern going for it so we need to have that on your uh, watch list as well so there are some interesting trades out there um, and as I talked about looking at the world's economies this is Latin America the ETF it's fairly liquid too it is it is sort of optionable it does have options they're they're kind of thin but from a directional standpoint this is one that again has a very strong divergence uh, bullish convergence pattern to it this is over and I wanted to come back and not just look at one year two year three years and a half in the last three and a half years, 
the Latin America. Now you, you've had all the bad news thrown at this thing with Venezuela, uh, you know, Argentina's debt, um, and yet it doesn't, it didn't move any lower on even more bad news. This, by the way, is a weekly chart. So at the very least, this is one at it. It it I think going into the beginning of the year, it certainly is negative on the year, but not by much, you know. And and that is a surprise. So if you're looking for here's where we were at um, at the beginning of last year or the beginning of this year, excuse me. As you can see, we're not really that far off. We're about 14 percent off um, from last year's. Uh, levels. I mean, so we could easily see a move, and I'm not s saying that this thing's going to scream to new all-time highs, but what I am saying is it's another breakout contender, and it is uh, forming a little bit of bullish convergence here. And so this is another uh, sector or stock, ETF that is, that we can be uh, looking at for opportunities for maybe between, I mean, if you think about a 20% move is a $6 move. Um, this could be a 30% mover and properly positioned in options for March, maybe April, May. In that time frame, this could be one that if you had some extra capital, let your money work for you rather than you work for your money. And this could be on a, like a last conditional change candle breakout. Uh, many of you know what the last additional change candle is. Uh, we could also look for a trend break, or and and what we're missing here is just a a little PPS buy signal like the one we got over there. So if you get like a little trend and a a, a breakout pattern, this thing could this could rocket to the upside and uh, at least get back in, in order to figure out where a market might go. You say, well, where the hell's the thing been? And if you note that even in, in, in this year, we could probably see this market back up into the, you know, by April, May, mid-year, uh, maybe, you know, mid-May, let's call it, uh, this thing could easily get back into the 44, 45 zone. So not a bad little opportunity, and I know there's a lot of uh, other stocks out there. People always love watching like Triple D and GoPro and BABA and all the, the stocks du jour. But these are, I like to look at the ones that have high probability, good volume to them, a good common sense approach, good history to them, and as well as, um, you know, I want to make sure that they're not on everyone's radar screen as well. So that's the one that I, I kind of kind of think that, uh, might be some more good considerations. You know, when we talk about market conditions, you know, we talk about this is right out of my book from a decade ago. This is the trend consolidation, the market cycles. You know, and, and why this is important is real simple. After strong trends to the downside, you know, you're either going to form a V bottom or what you might see instead is consolidation, choppiness. And that's one of the things that we talked about a week ago for the XOP sector is that I'm not looking for crude oil to go straight back up to, to 100 bucks, but I would definitely say some of the stocks, in, and we selected XOP based on our scans and also looking at the monthly pivot support. So with that said, this is the XOP. And uh, you may be interested to note that just on a daily basis, two weeks, just last week, we formed a little bit of a doji near pivot support. And while crude oil, this has a complete different um, chart pattern than crude oil prices. Crude oil is just, of course, straight down. However, it also... Uh, showed a loss of negative momentum. It was starting to show, as you can see, the momentum was building into a more bullish um, convergence pattern. Price was making lower lows and the histogram was making higher lows. Volume started to also creep up here. And so uh, this was one that instead of thinking that this market's going to go down and straight up, what we believe is an and, and and anticipate was that a number one because of this um, momentum loss this was an awesome strategy for credit put spreads for you option traders again sometimes you need to override your uh, you know market analytics 
like implied volatility and historic volatility and look at market conditions and then gauge your strategy on the market condition. Market conditions in my rule book always trumps the Greeks, so to speak. So in other words, if I think that the market is going to pause, digest a move, it might not rally, but it sure could stall the descent, which means with over time, a little bit of theta would be the collecting theta is more of the right strategy. And so this is one that we actually talked about and it is coming to fruition. And again, today would, you know, a nice way of coming in off that trade. Um, so there is a way that we can anticipate market opportunities and use technical tools by looking at A, the tools and the market condition. So one of the other aspects about this is what's happening in the next uh, week or so. What's the holidays? And we're going to got a weekend coming up. We got option expiration tomorrow. And then what else? You know, you've got some holidays in there, some trading days, and you got Europe off. I mean, we get three days. We can't take four days off in a row. And so Americans will be watching the markets like Schmoes on Friday, the day after Christmas. And, you know, in Europe, they pretty much take that 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 Friday they'll take that day off and turn that into a four day or I think a lot of you guys are gonna do the same thing and we're doing the same thing as well I just wanted to give you for comparative analysis the difference between the XOP and of course crude oil prices just to show you that even though they're similar sectors they're not the same so they they don't have an incredible high beta the XOP meaning it doesn't track the crude oil price tick for tick. So one of the things that's interesting is sometimes we see the fact that you'll find energy stocks or you'll find stocks can sometimes lead the commodity market. The interesting aspect is we've already seen a, mar a market pop in the XOP. We saw that that had bullish convergence on the momentum indicator. The funny thing is, is that we've got that same type of momentum reading here and um, I would be looking for this, the crude oil, um, to uh, start to lose that negative momentum. Now, you know, tomorrow it'll probably open up another dollar or so. But after tomorrow's, if if we are on a Friday and you gap lower and you're really significantly lower tomorrow, just remember we've got almost. Look at this this range that we've been making for the last four days. They're almost like four dollar ranges. One, two, three, four days in a row. This is almost like four dollar ranges. So there's an old adage in this business: volatility marks tops and bottoms of markets. So I think we are starting to carve a bottom here. Um, one of the things I would anticipate is not for a V bottom, and I I might be wrong on this. I mean, we could probably it wouldn't surprise me to get this market back to 65 by say mid January. It wouldn't be a surprise whatsoever. I mean, I I'm not betting on that. I'm saying it wouldn't surprise me. But it it would I would be more prone to say that the market would do more of this digest this huge move you know do more of that that type of sideways action do some of this type of stuff and so the best strategy in in that type of environment where you go sideways is more credit put selling and I would do a credit put spread I would not just sell put options outright um, anyway I just thought that would be looking at market the condition that we've we've uh, made mention and wrote about and published over a decade ago that you know you're probably gonna see the market do trend and then you're gonna see consolidation so just acknowledge that if it is in a consolidation phase then you know well why don't do a fancy pants iron condor and sell a call spread and sell a put spread and if you did that what would happen if I was wrong and we did have a V bottom well you just at the, I'm not saying that we can't do a V bottom I'm saying that the descent of the market decline should start to wane and that therefore this could be especially as measuring the other energy sectors like the XES and the XOP you want to start to see uh, that confirmation that the markets stopped its descent so looking at the market condition by these little ranges in here and then watching for maybe intraday 
uh, moves lower prices in here uh, with this kind of bullish uh, convergence on my momentum indicator is probably going to help us to identify near this 50 psychologically 50 bucks is a bit of an important thing so I think over the next three weeks the January you know you may want to explore some credit put spreads there and, and one market that you could look at of course instead of the futures would be USO so that's why I say market condition always trumps option theory that's one of the things that you want to make mention so a lot of people um, need to understand example is in a low implied volatility uh, environment uh, most people would say it's best to be buying premium in a low implied volatility market but if you get a big sell-off the better strategy instead of buying call spreads just because implied volatility is low that doesn't mean that's the best strategy the best strategy might be selling put premium or credit put spreads instead so always remember market condition always in my book trumps option theory that's a very important case so indicators price patterns you all know if you've never heard me before welcome um, the person's pivot indicator it's a powerful tool that helps uncover that predetermined support and resistance level um, and and I think that just like any other indicator you don't use one all by itself we like to c confirm by using other confirming tools and I do look at patterns many of you notice that you know uh, I threw a couple of my own uh, little signature patterns like the high closed doji and the low closed doji but we also like to look at M tops and W bottoms and big on wedge breakouts right wedge patterns are also very important other patterns that uh, many of you may have uh, seen or recognized this this actual insert photo is from the tweet that I sent out um, back in um, September which illustrated hey guys we have a broadening top this was and and I actually did a, a seminar with you guys I think some of you may have attended that one I said hey we've got a a, a broadening top it's also known as a foghorn that was when someone decided to offer their own um, uh, nomenclature they had heard I'll never forget it they said well it's a megaphone pattern well the correct term is a broadening top but more importantly our indicator and this is the exact chart I used and you can see here in the S&P's um, using that S&P's you'll note here this is that orange and that blue that's my advanced decline you'll note that we had an increase in price making newer highs with the bearish divergence in the um, advanced decline analysis comp ratio line and this is the actual this is the chart here so we were also at a quarterly pivot that's the quarterly pivot resistance so we had a again a chart pattern against pivots and a different entirely different indicator and a third or fourth tool was you can also clearly see the direction of this blue line it's more like moving down isn't it you see that trend of the blue line it's moving lower that's the on balance volume the market was rallying price was rising on a weakening volume very bearish setup that I mean boy do you not think that we're not gonna see that we won't see that every day of the week but we'll probably see that type of situation where we get that not a broadening top but maybe we get the divergence and the volume with the AD lines we'll probably get that at least two or three times next year so that'll be good trade setups easily we'll get that and most likely something you want to watch for I already showed you this this was the actual chart on the Russell um, on on the um, where we had the increase on the OBV now I wanted to just share this chart with you because from a learning experience to help you guys get rich and I mean that too because I think that these markets are allowing you to make some very significant money um, and it's just a matter and I, and I think it's 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 a matter of applying more a directional analysis and more directional trade setups and timing them a better because we have the tools and it is working I'm here to tell you that but if you're using the old school stuff such as this volume histogram I think you're 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 probably gonna have a problem because I don't know what the hell this this stuff tells you 
uh, to me, it, it, it doesn't tell me a damn thing. It, what it, it may have told people is simply this, if you take a look at this together. Um, it says that as the trend was moving down, it was on strong volume. And then as the market starts to rally, the rally's on light volume. But what on balance volume is suggesting is while the trend was moving down, it was moving down on lighter volume. The lows were not getting as as more they were getting less pronounced. They were not making significant lower lows. And then all of a sudden, in a very short burst, we crossed over a moving average of the on balance volume and so the indicator was showing a significant upside accumulation with volume incidentally the cash the 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 IWM didn't quite have the high close doji so again if you're a cash market trader you better look at the futures if you're a futures trader you should be looking at the cash I think everyone could really benefit by looking at both markets it's a strong message that I teach looking at that combination clear as a day you could see the high close doji formation clear as a day you could see the PPS signal and so we were looking because of the volume surge we were more bullish on the Russell than we were on any of the other indexes at that point in time and that was you know a very I mean it was a stellar outstanding um, trade we actually tweeted this was so we actually tweeted this out to get long the Russell to our, our we almost have 45,000 followers we tweeted out get long the Russell look at the IWM calls before on October 15th and that's something that's verifiable so it's not like we said hey get long the Russell here on November 5th or October 31st no we did it down here for people to see so that's what's kind of neat but I mean here are just uh, another thing that we did and we even tweeted this one out was we were looking from a seasonal perspective I gave a guy over at the trade show came to see me he said he was going to get back to day trading and he only had $2,500 to get back into the market and he wanted to day trade again. I said, why would you do that, man? You're not going to make any money. It's going to be damn near impossible to make money day trading with $2,500. He says, why don't you do yourself a favor? Buy a couple of the February live cattle puts and sit on them. Well, we were positioned for some live cattle puts, but the thing is, this market, not only did you get that a rising wedge formation again divergence but we were also in a seasonally weak period of time and yes we took this trade and yes we got out a little early but needless to say it was another great trade that came based on the market analysis ironically you could see we're at a pivot resistance and the actual high of the market was formed by a daily low close doji isn't that amazing if you just know what to look for so um, this market patterns do have a, a lot of relevancy. By the way, I think uh, we ended limit down yesterday and we went limit up today. Um, the market's probably found its value as we near um, the quarterly pivot support, which was down here at 152.87. That's live cattle. I don't think uh, live cattle's now probably going to bounce around and it's no longer a short at this point in time by the way that trade has come and gone but the analysis between the momentum and the seasonal analysis as well as the indicators the PPS sell signal just absolutely stellar so whether you're trading ILF whether you're trading knobs whether you're trading Baba whether you're trading Google whatever you're trading fab fabulous this was the other day a little low close doji at pivot uh, person's pivot resistance with by the way divergence in volume um i just showed you the russell but this was the russell just yesterday by the way we formed a high close doji at monthly support yesterday and we gapped higher so it pays to watch the cash market it pays to identify hey we got a doji and what's the high and low of that doji so you know if the markets near the close and you're well above the prior days high maybe you could look at buying and setting yourself up going into the close the next day 
buying some call options and be more directional. What are the rules to the high close doji? Within one or two time frames, you should see immediate results. So the, what I'm trying to share with you is there is a right way of buying options. This is the bonds, a little wedge, a little breakout, which at this point in time, we might be forming an M top formation. And we were positioned with the knob spread here at like 18, which was not only in the weekly observation. I don't know if you guys get the weekly observation. We send that out to our clients as well. If you're on our um, our mailing uh, list, if you do get that, I think we put out some, you know, uh, a couple little things. By the way, here are the, the, the tweets. You can go back and look at all the history of the tweets and what we sent out like... Um, here was on December 15th. We're buying calls in IWM or TNA. How much more do you really got to lay it out for someone that, you know, by the way, I, I want to give credit to uh, one of our students, Bill M., um, in the room here tonight with us. Because he's like, hey, John, what about TNA? I mean, I had forgotten all about going directional with, uh, that was two weeks ago, right, Bill? And then this time around, I didn't forget. So we gave people a choice of doing either call options in IWM or TNA and also we were selling the knob spread short the bonds long the notes at 1729 and you do that trade through Martin Luther King Day in January um, that trade allowed you to get filled and today allowed you to take a small a pretty decent profit too if you didn't want to stick with it but any event so these are the kind of things that uh, we we put out as you can see before the trade occurs not after the fact and this is all you know just sending tweets out for free this was a pilot program that I started earlier this year in addition to that if you go over here to the blog you'll see where it has the um, our observations what I see happening and here knob spread and it's offering a stellar shorting I don't know how to put that in any other verbiage you sell 30 year bonds and buy the 10 year notes now I do the spread one to one like it used to be done I know the exchange doesn't offer you a margin relief by doing one to one but that's what that 18 represents a one to one one to one notes to bonds the CME will give you a uh, a margin relief they have either a a two to one which I would not recommend two two notes versus one bond or the three to two three notes to two bonds I still prefer the one-to-one -one. it has more inherent risk but the fact is that the bonds are a hundred thousand uh, dollar notional value and the notes are a hundred thousand dollar notional value contract so they're they're equal in value which is the bonds move more on an intraday or daily basis than they have a wider range than notes anyway that requires a little bit more teaching but needless to say if you're an experienced trader you kind of get an idea um, about what we're looking for here in, in some of the stuff. Uh, McClellan Oscillator is now in oversold territory. So the good stuff that we put out there. Um, copper prices. I mentioned this earlier tonight. We're forming against a longer term pivot support. That longer term means quarterly pivot support. Um, in all of this hyped up uh, uh, mess with copper and Russia and China and and the world falling to hell in a handbasket copper prices typically bottom out this time of year now they haven't rallied but they're not breaking and since um, actually the beginning of December they're they're actually up isn't it from that low we have a strong bullish convergence on the momentum indicator all we're looking for now is a trigger but funny thing is, is that this market is also kind of forming a little bit of a compression wedge type of pattern that if we get above, you may notice this white line right there, that is 297. That is the last conditional change candle. So we would look for a breakout, either a buy, and we're missing, we don't have it, we're missing a buy signal. We're either looking for a buy signal or we're looking for a breakout above that level. And that would give us a little bit, I mean, if you can, th if you think about it, you, you kind of clear a, a little resistance. If you clear above this area, there's like a lot of room up there for the market to get up over time. So 
copper prices, I think a market that can't go down on bearish news typically finds itself going up later. So this has been a bad time for copper, and notice that copper prices isn't going down. So you want to keep copper on your radar screen for daily buy signals. All right. So when I say you can scan for buy signals, you can certainly scan for uh, PPS buy signals on most plat platforms. So any event, we look at the momentum and the volume, and I've already given you uh, a reason why I look, and these are just some of the trades and why we looked at the difference between uh, being in puts from the queue in, in September as well as the uh, S&Ps, and then covering those and going long the IWM calls. This is the indicators that has helped us with those, with those trades. And we've had, looking at these volumes, just as a reminder, if you saw this last month, we had an earnings season like QLogic. Nobody in their right mind saw this one coming except for us. We had an incredible, we had a PPS buy signals. We had strong momentum indicator. We had beautiful P, uh, on balance volume setups in both the two time frames, daily and weekly. And that got us set up for the QLogic. Another one was JDS Uniface, which I, I even forgot what the hell that company did. I mean, it had been so long, but it came up on our radar screen, and we were positioned in that trade as well for an earnings play, which was outstanding. And I know a lot of people in our trading community, I think a few of you are in the room tonight with me. Now, we did a presentation uh, and, and, and gave a big analysis on Whole Foods before it exploded on the scene. Uh, on why not only did it look good a week before earnings, it had a little PPS buy signal, and then daily was already in a buy mode. Um, QCOM, we were bearish on QCOM, and it had a sell signal prior, and it had even on that rally, on the rally prior to earnings. This rally prior to earnings came with really no main volume. That was a dead deadening, and it was near pivot resistance, person's pivot resistance. So not only was it explaining or sharing to us that we're bearish, but even when the market had a, a rally ahead of earnings, it had negative momentum as measured by both my momentum indicator. I mean, clearly you can see that this is pretty powerful information. A market's moving up and the momentum indicator's moving down. The market's moving up, taking out old highs, and the volume can't take out those those levels. That's a short. That's something that we also identified and had an we we had an open house. Maybe you attended that back then. So it's not that we get lucky and flip coins every once in a while. I think what we have is something that's a really fantastic methodology of really identifying potential reversals in the markets and we have so many opportunities to trade that's what's really exciting this is another one this is getting this is getting i mean i'm tired i mean i need a vacation there's just been so many in, just wonderful trading opportunities and trades that we've taken this was cisco same situation obv pps its story's just getting old Amazon, we did this one with you guys, and we scaled out of this trade. Now, Amazon has just crashed and burned, so thank God we had this one um, that we used for scale out. But it was another breakout momentum, high close doji. This was good for a, a wonderful trade. It actually went up to like 342, actually. It was a nice, it was a beautiful setup, a beautiful trade. Not only another one we tweeted out, we took ourselves. As you can see, we're not just blowing smoke. We've taken a lot of these beautiful trades, a lot of these great setups in the marketplace. As the chart showed, a lot of the trades that I'm using in tonight's presentation have been trades that have been nothing less than stellar. But most of these trades we've actually even not only uh, we've done in our own trading room, but we've also both tweeted them out to people as, as a, just as a, this, like I said, this little pilot program to see how many people can actually follow what we talk and are willing to want to learn about this? And that was what was key. Anyway, we have tonight, we've created for you guys, if you're interested and you're not familiar with my work, a brand new study course. This is really stuff that I think I may have gotten a little too much information that we're offering for this week because we're doing a, a presentation on Saturday. And I wanted to make sure that you guys had first dibs on this.
But this will be our course. It's a brand new study course. Um, and for this week only, it's 189. It'll come out next. It'll be available uh, after this weekend. Um, it's how to trade the PPS indicator combined with person's pivots, what the best time frames to use are, the practical purpose of the moving averages that are overlaid on prices, the use of the pivot point as a trading guide, not just the support and resistance, but that pivot point itself, how to set up and scan for trades using PPS. We went through two platforms, TOS as well as TradeStation. And what the scans can tell you for sector analysis, that's really a key bullet point that's in the course. And of course, I went through a couple technical indicators, and since we have a few people that are talking about Ichimuchu cloud charts as well as Bollinger Bands, how is it effective for those that use those indicators? How does it help support that in addition to volume, how to integrate volume analysis with the PPS indicator? So this is an incredible um, study course, uh, and of course, one of the other uh, bullet points that I think is pretty cool is the trick that I talked a lot about tonight of using the PPS with the cash and the futures market comparative analysis like using the Russell futures and the IWM the ETF now we also have an incredible system a trading system and this is a new mechanical trading strategy system that includes my PPS breakout system strategy. It gives you instructions for placing order entries for day trading, instructions for placing your stops, instructions for setting your profit objectives, instructions for scale outs, instructions for trailing your stop, and using this method not just for day trading but for end of day and weekly time frames. There's also a really amazing section on applying the breakout method and how you use options for that. So selecting the right strike price and selecting the right expiration date. This course, or this not course, but strategy system is available this week for 489. And it will be probably, you know me, it'll probably be to the end of the year, we'll get lazy, but that's it. But it is 649, you need a special link it is not even on the website at that price. But if you're interested and never had my stuff ever before, take a bundle package offer, $4.95. You get both the course and the system strategy, how to trade the PPS indicator with person's pivots, and the PPS breakout strategy. We have with this, in the month of January, we will have, as usual, any time that I've done these types of courses, a one-hour online question and answer mentoring session. So you'll have, we'll record it, and you will have access to the recording. So in typical fashion for how to study correctly, take the time over the holidays, study the material. We get back together, we do a Q&A session, and we go through the material together so that you know how to practically use the information correctly. There's one thing, reading, watching videos, and working how to do it. It's another thing, getting one-on-one -on -one instruction as a follow-up with it. And that is what I would strongly recommend that Everyone, if you're not familiar with my work, take this right now. This, the last time we had a, 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 a session was the summer mentoring courses that we did. And I know a lot of you guys uh, that took that had a, a vast improvement in your trading. This, these two new courses will be fabulous for those who are beginners, intermediate traders, advanced traders that are not familiar with my work this is something that I would strongly recommend and urge you to take. It is very, very, I, I don't have any other words to say, but awesome material. That is going to be uh, the offer. If you're interested, we'll send you an email link. If you have any other uh, questions, we can have those. You certainly can have a chance to answer some questions if you had any for 
tonight. Now, Jerry said, can I repeat ETF symbols? Um, why do seasonality movements work in stocks? Why do earnings... Why do seasonality movements in stocks work? Because they do, David. And another reason they work, more importantly, is there's supply and demand. All right, certain times of the year. I mean, just think of it this way: you don't find many people get sick, uh, cold and flu season in August. I'll just throw that one out. People, refineries, less less demand for a product. You got lead time, lag time. If you go to the store in about six weeks to a, a department store and try to buy gloves you'll probably see bathing suits on the store even though it'll be 30 below wind chill factor in Chicago they're gonna have bathing suits on the store shelves there's that lead time so seasonality plays a strong uh, uh, interest there so um, moral of the story will have that um, if you are interested in that package we have a uh, a link for you that you can get. You just click on that link right there in your browser, and you will get that uh, that package should come up right for you guys. So, with that said. We'll also send an, an email invitation out to you guys if you're interested, and as well as the recording for tonight's session. Thank you all for being here. I hope you did get something out of tonight's presentation. I know we had some uh, a bunch of stocking stuffers there to look forward to, things that aren't on the radar screen of a lot of people, and uh, hopefully some ideas on how to you know uh, uh, tackle the markets in a different light. Remember. Profits are great, but anytime there's high profit potential, there's a lot of risk associated. So what we do is we want to look for what? We want to look for low risk, high probability trade setups. That's the moral of the story. So get that bundle package. End of story. You should be able to click on that link right there. Uh, just go to PersonsPlanet.com and you can get your, your bonus package and in the meantime we'll send that out for you as soon as possible all right so with that said it's been a fun year you guys and I hope everyone has uh, it, through the year we've done a lot of informal and informational uh, webinars and I know we've uh, put together some pretty decent ones because I do know that uh, we've had some some uh, pretty good calls in the market that you guys have been a part of so with that said um, the work continues the trades continue and the and and I look forward to 2015 with you guys everyone have a um, have a great evening thank you all